It's Thursday, May 2nd, 2013. Thanks for tuning in to the 404 Show. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm I'm excited. I'm really excited. <laughs> it's a big deal for me because uh, today on the show, we've got the great Mark Marin on the program. Oh. Right? Oh. Mark Marin. Thank you, fellas. <laughs> you know, it's a big deal because, you know, we you have a great podcast, uh, WTF podcast. We have an okay podcast. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, come on. When we... <laughs> well, three of you. Right. I know. <laughs> you got a lot of equipment in here. It's got to be better than okay. Look at this mixer, right? Yeah. Look at that. You can barely have, you barely have any my real estate. My mixer is half the size, a quarter of the size that I've only got six channels on mine. I wouldn't even know how to operate that thing. It's all for sure. Yeah, we don't either. He's we got don't a know. big board over there. <laughs> yeah. There's candy inside of it. Yeah. It's what is all, that board? It's a, this is a switcher right that's, here. That's for the cameras we got. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. see, you got the video element. Yeah. Ah, there I am. I there, see me. There yep. you are. Yeah, I never fu- did that. The future right here. <laughs> you know, because people, whenever we meet people who enjoy our show in real life, the, the first question, right? It's like, oh, what do you, what podcast do you listen to? Yeah. And up until like, you know, 16 months ago, I'd be like, oh, I don't, I don't yeah. listen to podcasts. Right. Yeah. But now I tell them I listen to the WTF podcast. Oh, thank you. That's the truth, because I really love what you do. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, if you've never listened to WTF, you should, because... I, the way I describe it, it's like this amazing membership to a comedy club. Uh, yeah. And you have these uh, really uh, exclusive access to kind of the funniest people around, basically. Yeah, some of them. Some of them I can't get at. Some <laughs> is There are some people I have no access to. Yeah, like, yeah, you'd think everyone's accessible, but some people, no, it's not that uh, Well, you, that you wouldn't know because, I mean, you're really like, I mean, you're getting guys like Mel Brooks. You're well, getting... yeah. Well, I mean, there are guys that I can, uh, that, that sort of come up and sometimes there's a window of opportunity to interview people right. uh, for one reason or another I, you know, i'm still going to do whatever i do the type of interview i do but sometimes people are out there on a junket of some kind sure. which i ignore right but i will seize the opportunity to get in there and talk to them but some people uh they just don't want to do the show or it's hard to get them on the show i mean i've actually booked people on twitter i've reached out i've pestered albert brooks i've pestered uh who else have i pestered on twitter i've actually gotten a few people to, to come around on Twitter. Just by poking But Albert him. Brooks, I can't I can't seem to get him. I don't think he likes to talk about himself that much. He doesn't do a lot, so you just got to live with that. Daniel Tosh does not want to do my show. <laughs> what? what? What the hell? Why? He just doesn't want to talk about himself. Some people <laughs> are like, that's my, I got a public personality, and that's all I need the public to yeah. know. Yeah. Enough. I don't, I don't understand that. Well, I mean, you don't understand that in the day and age we live on in now that some I'm, people might yeah. want to be private? Right, but the level of transparency, especially a guy like Tosh, who's freaking all over the place. I mean... But it's still a public personality personality. I, mean, I, I get it. I mean, he's, not like, every... he's a sweetheart in real life, and he's so nice. I, like, he is kind of. Is that what it is? Like, no, he is. A, you know, he's a sweetheart. He's got that brand, you know, that he wants I, to oh, I don't know. I didn't I didn't push him on it. You know, <laughs> he's just, he's a very nice guy. He's one of the only men I know that walks around with two little dogs occasionally. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't press him on it. He's very respectful. He said, I love the show. I'm not going to do it. Right. Yeah. And uh, well, I, on some level, I think there will come a time, because of the way the culture is in terms of accessibility, that, that we'll, we'll actually be impressed. Yeah. When we meet somebody, we don't know everything about immediately. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Like, I have no idea who you are. Right. Oh, congratulations. How, <laughs> how did you manage that? Yeah. Absolutely. That's funny. It's <laughs> true. You, you, we know way too much about everybody. I kind of understand that sentiment, though, just because, I mean, on our show, and I wanted to ask you about doing a podcast by yourself, and if that was always the decision to just do it solo. I could never do something like that. I tried one time, and it was a disaster. But, oh, you know, awesome. having Jeff on the show, having Ariel here... It's really nice to have that reaction when we're having a conversation. To do it by yourself is really intimidating to me, and I have infinite respect for anyone that can do something like well, that. Well, it was a conscious moment you know, where I did some radio for a year or so. I did some political talk radio, but that was sort of a morning crew situation. There was always people in the booth, always right. people you were playing to. Right. But I always thought in my mind that if I could get to a point where I could talk on the mic and not need anybody else, mm-hmm. that that was a, an amazing, um, it would be an amazing freedom. I don't spend a lot of time talking by myself on the show, you know, 10 to 20 minutes mm-hmm. at the beginning, right. but I know I can do it. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a skill. It's like anything else. You, you, you set your mind to figuring out how to get comfortable and not panic right. on the mic by yourself. I mean, there are guys that are great at it. Uh, there's, uh, you know, in the, in the righty world, I mean, Rush Limbaugh is, is there's no one better then pausing and waiting <laughs> He's got those to dramatic. say something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Randy Rhodes, of course, uh, uh, on the other side. And there's a lot of people that do political talk. Yeah. Uh, and that that can just man the mic and, and just stay on. Mike Malloy is, a, is a, another guy. Phil Hendry. Mm-hmm. 
who's a, a oh, genius. Oh, amazing voices. I genius. love Bill Henry. Yeah. I just interviewed him. I haven't put it up yet. But uh, but it's a it's a it's it's a specific way of broadcasting, a specific way of doing radio, and, and I always wanted to sort of challenge myself to do that. And yeah. once I got those skills, it, it opens up a whole new world for you. I always find myself filling space by saying things like "What else? What else?" and that is a conversation killer, even sure. when you're doing it. And you so, don't you don't know you have those quirks until you do something oh, like yeah, that. I, yeah. Like I can I can lay out uh, hundreds of you knows. Mm-hmm. I'm a big you knower. I say you, you know, know like nobody's business. Yeah, <laughs> right. And to the point where it doesn't. It's not even you know anymore. It's like you know, yeah. you know, like you know, it's just this weird <laughs> noise you make. Yeah. yeah. I do, uh, I do uh, you know what I mean? I do yeah, something like, like that, that. Almost like earnest. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's yeah, pretty It's lame. a habit that yeah. because you don't want there to be a, a silence, but sometimes silence, even in conversation, sure. is uh, important. Like when you're having a conversation with somebody, if somebody you know, drops something right. on you, you know, uh, there you go. There's a, you know, you, you, your, your first instinct is like, oh, I better jump in there. Right. But a lot of times you just, maybe you just let it sit for a minute because then the people who are listening are like, what is that? Oh my God! Let <laughs> yeah, it simmer. Yeah, yeah. Let it simmer. Yeah. Why steamroll it? All right. No. Yeah, it took a while to figure that out. I have to be very conscious of that stuff. And you can see and you can hear the evolution as you, uh, you know, pay yeah, attention. Yeah, from to the from program. desperate, aggravated, no, no <laughs> emotionally <none of> <laughs> volatile. <laughs> well, I think the the, the amazing to relatively thing about, content. <laughs> <laughs> the amazing thing about the show is that you get these mostly private people to open up on a level that I don't think anyone really has access to. Um, so. I mean, it's kind of awesome that you're here today. Not really, tur- you know, for once be able to turn the tables back on you, not in a bad way. Sure. But to definitely, uh, you know, give people some insight, especially people who dig your show. Have yeah. that kind of insight to you. Knock though. yourself out. All right, well. What do you got? I want to talk about, first, the book. <laughs> yeah. All right? Your new book out this week, Attempting Normal. Yeah, look at that picture. This is pretty private, man. Mm. Yeah. Just let it all hang out there. Yes. I yeah. like that. What, the cover or the book? Well, hey, both. <laughs> yeah, they're on it. Fellow yeah, cat the, guy, uh, too. I love that. I like it. Well, yeah. yeah, Justin's a big cat guy. I yeah. know you're a big yeah. cat guy. All cats are beautiful. I yeah. I don't understand you I'm, people. I'm, I'm partial to my cats, but I'll, I'll roll with you on, on <laughs> I like your cats, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My cat's right. Yeah. Well, that book, yeah, it's pretty personal. There's yeah. some uh, relatively embarrassing things in there that I think I uh, contextualize pretty well. You ever put something in there and you get it back from like an editor and the editor's like, hey, you know, Mark, you shouldn't. Are you sure you want to do this? Sure, you know, that's really, uh, that's incriminating. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I, I wasn't so much worried about incriminating myself, but, you know, when you write memoir style or you realize that, like, I've had a life and other people were involved and, uh, you know, my perception of the events that went down are mine, right. yeah. but they are my, my life. So how you treat people in this type of writing is tricky. I mean, you do have to you, you make decisions about possible blowback. Right. Personal blowback. You know, like, how is my ex-wife going to react to that? I don't know. I mean, she's doing all right. You know, I think she's okay. But, I mean, I picked that scab. I mean, memoir writing, a lot of it is picking scabs open. I got, I've got closure out on, on some of that stuff. But, like, that's a good story, though. Yeah, yeah. let's go open up that <laughs> yeah, let's scar. Yeah, let's get that bleeding. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot like podcasting, too. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times when I say something, I just like, well, if I regret it, there it is for the rest of my life on the Internet. So. It's out there. It's just the other best thing. not to think about it. Yeah, sometimes. No, but you should think about it, I, I think, to a degree. Uh, and you get more aware of it, as, as, and the more public you you are with yourself. But uh-huh. I mean, there was a piece in there that the la- the last week of editing, like it was days before it was going to go to press, yeah. that I let my my current girlfriend read. You know, there was a couple pieces in there she hadn't read it. She tries to distance herself from you know every anything that has anything to do with me talking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a tricky relationship. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like it. But, uh, <laughs> but I'd written these pieces in there that involved her, and I let her read them You know that last week, because I'm like, all right, she got, I got to let her read them. And she was livid. She was like, this is not... I don't want to be out there like this. I think it's misrepresent, misrepresented. Yeah, I think you make yourself look a certain way that I don't even believe. And, uh, you know, I, my life is private. And, I, and it was it was tough. And then you're in one of those moments where it's like, yeah, but it's my art. Right. Or I kind of want to have her around. Don't so, say yeah, to me. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, so like, yeah, all right. So that's out. <laughs> so uh, I had to write another piece uh, in the in the last hours there. But the piece that I wrote, I think, is actually a better piece. And I and I think her point was was correct. Yeah. That uh, you know, how am I representing myself in this? And and what because everything you know after it's happened is some sort of revisionism. Of course. You know, the event happened, and then it's just your interpretation of the event. Right. And how that evolves over time. Yeah, you have this internal sort of director's cut that you do. Yeah, and you don't know. You do it by you know, it, it's, it. it's completely revealing of of who you are is how you revise right. or interpret that situation for sure. 
But uh, yeah, I, I think it's. Uh, I'll see what happens. I know my father's nervous, but uh, you know, whatever. I, after a certain point, you, you got to look at it and, and realize. Well, you know, I I went easy on a lot of this. I didn't write an entire book about him, <laughs> yeah. or my ex wife, right. or my current relationship, or my cats, or whatever. I, I chose to write uh, essays as opposed to a a, a one single through line. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't want to deal with that. It was, uh, you know, I had a lot going on and, and I didn't know how to do that. How do you do a whole book with just chapters about you, you know, as a comedian that's just sort of like, well, I was always a comedian. I was a class clown. And then the <laughs> drugs happened. And then I was sad. You know, like, how do you, you know, do that uh, and, and make it, you know, unique? I'm, I'm not a writer by trade. Mm-hmm. And I have friends who are brilliant writers and I didn't want to assume that I was a writer. But I knew that if I compartmentalized it and I wrote essays, that I do have a voice on the page, and I think I'm a good writer. But that was the way I could handle, uh, you know, doing these these pieces. Like I knew there was a, a beginning, middle, and end, and if I could work within essays, uh, that the you know, the finish line was a little closer. Yeah. When you got to write a whole book, it's sort of like having an incomplete in college. You're like, <laughs> you wake up, you're like, oh god, I gotta do that, or I'm not gonna graduate. You know? <laughs> So it's due this afternoon, right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, it comes to that, yeah. uh, and also it, it was an interesting process. Yeah, you know, I wrote it pretty much on my own. I didn't engage my editor till the till the last minute because mm-hmm. I'd written one piece. And I'd sent it to him right at the beginning, and you know he sent it back with all these notes. And like my brain couldn't interpret that as anything other than like oh, I got a C. I think is that a C? <laughs> you know, like. A, you know, it's so uh, you know, I realized like I'm not confident enough to deal with this shit. All this red pen everywhere. Yeah, every, well, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're, gonna do, we're gonna do that with every piece. I, yeah. I can't. I'm not gonna be able. To, hey, I'm gonna flunk my book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I just decided to to not talk to him. Yeah. I was, I, I was like, look, I, I'll I'll hit you up when this is due. <laughs> Bypass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, and he was so it became that you know they wanted sixty thousand words. He check in every few months. I'm like, how are we doing? I'm like, oh, it's great. It's great. <laughs> Got nothing done. Nothing. Yeah, <laughs> not, no, I That's was doing beach. shit, but I was doing it at my p- <laughs> my, my pace. Yeah, and then they wanted sixty thousand words, and at the you know the day it was due, I I gave them ninety thousand. I said, look now, now make a book out of this. Mm-hmm. I'm not married to all this stuff, so yeah. now you do your job. I did mine. It's, you know, all, it's in your hands. Let's shape this shit. Yeah, you know, you get back to me, put something together, and <laughs> send it back to me. So we kind of you know built it. You know, we built it out from what I wrote, and you know, and he helped me organize it, and, and we and I think it came out pretty good. Right on. Yeah, I've I've already uh, read a few chapters. It's, I mean, a lot of people who know you mm. and you are very transparent on the show feel like if you listen regularly, you get to know the kind of person you yeah, are, yeah. especially the way you act around different guests. Right. Yeah. Like uh, we were talking about Mel Brooks before. Yeah. I could hear you smiling the entire time. Yeah. You can also hear me, hear me become a 70 year old Jewish man. Right. At moments. You just, you're like the chameleon. <laughs> what are you kidding? Right? Okay. <laughs> all of a sudden, you got, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got like the, yeah. you know, the payas the pay going on. I didn't all of a go sudden, that far, but no. you know, I, I do, uh, I do Zelig a bit. That's right. See, yeah. people don't know Zelig. Zelig's a Woody Allen movie. It's where a great Woody Allen movie. Woody Allen is basically suffers from a chameleon disease. Yeah. It's a great and, Woody Allen movie. And the scene in the jail when he's turning into the Hasidic rabbi yeah, yeah. doesn't really get much better <laughs> yeah, there's, than yeah, that. That's yeah. one of my favorite Woody Allen movies. And they movies. show the transformation. <laughs> it's just so it's, happened. It, it was Yeah, it's actually it's an unsung uh, genius movie that he did. It was very out of the ordinary for him. And, and, they, and they utilized a lot of effects that were pretty fresh at that time yeah. to, to make it work. I, uh, I, I have to bring this up because you'll dig this. I, when I was in college, I got to take a class... Just on Woody Allen. Yeah. I was in film school th- from, like, uh, Take the Money and Run all the way up through, I think at the time it was, like, Hollywood Ending. Mm-hmm. Was that when I graduated. And it was just, after a while, they all sort of just blend together, especially in, like, the late 70s and, and 80s, where it's just like, well, he oh, does, he's I, a, you know. He's a worker, you know, so he yeah. just wants to keep generating one a year no matter what. And, you know, there's some stinkers, you know, as, as time went on. But, you know, then you sort of wonder, can he do another good one? And then he does, and you're like, all right. He just want. He doesn't care. Yeah, no, for sure. He just wants to keep working. Yeah, and and some of them are are, are more um, resonant than others, and some of them are just you know kind of he's hacking himself. Yeah, but there's a couple that you know he always does something great. I mean, Sweet and Lowdown, which isn't even he's not even in that. I think is one of the one of the great movies that he did, and I liked uh, uh, Midnight in Paris, even though it was silly. It, there was a, a lot of heart to it, and 
And then he does that, you know, what is it, break point? Is that what it was called? Match point. Match point. Yeah. I mean, where the hell did that come from? It's like almost like yeah. he had this uh, dream, and then it was like, all right, I'm yeah. this guy now. And there's even some that I, I just ne- never made it to. All right. But, yeah. uh, but you know, certainly uh, uh, you know, early on, I mean, I watched all those movies. All right, yeah. we're speaking Greek to these guys. Let's uh, <laughs> let's let's move on a little bit. You, uh, you're kind of like hitting the PR jackpot right now. And I read you on Twitter like, all right, everyone, it's a lot of me right now. Yeah, let's yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. We'll, get, we'll deal with this together. Let's get through this <laughs> as a team, as a group. Uh, but you really, t- I mean, a lot of people struggle in, in, in producing anything, but you've got, you know, the podcast continues to roll on. The book is out this week. And then Friday, brand new show on IFC premiering at 10 o'clock yeah. called Marin, mm-hmm. which is sort of the culmination of everything, right? It's a, it, it, it deals with the podcast, deals with your personal life a little bit. How much of that is really you? How much of that is, is sort of sewn into it? Cause well, it's a scripted comedy, so it, each story, each episode is driven, story-driven comedy, and, and it is about my life, so there is a podcast in it. And it, Some of the events, I would say it probably takes place towards the beginning of the podcast when everything was sort of crapped out on me and I had to make some sort of change and some sort of choice for myself, and right. I chose to do the podcast in my garage. And So it's around that time. You know, I'm not too far away from, yeah, I'm, I'm farther away than I should be to have the feelings I did, but I was not out of the divorce that long. Okay. So there's, you know, there's elements of, of me dating. There's elements of me struggling, you know, with my management. There's elements of, you know, my relationship with my father. And, uh, you know, the first episode is based on an internet troll event. We'd never heard of that. Oh, God, the worst. We live in a troll culture right now on all levels. Well, just, I, it's just predatory douchebags everywhere. It's, 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 pre- right. it's pretty tough out there. I, it sounds like, judging from the content of that pilot, it's, it, does it really get to you that much? I mean, do you Sometimes really, it yeah? depends. On the day. I, I'm getting a little better at detaching, but it's just like, I don't know why it's like that because on, on every level, you know, whether it's a, you know, television or legal matters that, you know, it's really a troll culture. You know, that's, you know, that's what people are after is, is, you know, you know, pestering people oh, or, yeah. or being predatorily, uh, you know, shitty. Yeah. It's just this passive aggressive sort of, uh, and but it happens everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I think it's because you know, given that you, you know we we don't manufacture a lot in this country now, it seems that all we produce are assholes. <laughs> That's it. That, you know that you know what do you make in America? Assholes. Yeah. We, we we have an asshole factory. Big export. They're <laughs> yeah, gonna yeah, learn yeah, that yeah, in yeah. social studies yeah, years yeah. from now. Like in every the... state, there's a huge business in creating assholes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, because I mean, you know, we deal with some of that ourselves, and there's always some guy who's got who has every answer. He knows exactly what. You know, you're doing wrong and he's right or she's right. So do you... Uh, but that's not even... that. That's trolling to a degree, but at least, you know, they think they know something. Uh, but the thing is, is that a lot of... You got to realize a lot of them do it just because that's what they do. Right. It's not. It's like almost like this game they play. Yeah. They don't realize... And they love it when people are sensitive because oh, yeah. then they win their game. Yeah, right. it's, a, it's a version of fanaticism because they, they want that reply. They want... Yeah, they're, a, they a just want to get under your skin. If you, yeah. you know, and I've blown up on them and, you know, it's like, you know, it's just like... You, you dumb shit, and, yeah. and then they're like, ah, right. <laughs> gotcha. so as soon as you do that, you lose. <laughs> right. But the first episode is sort of based on a, on an event. You know, I found that in doing the show, a lot of the stories are are come from my life. But mm. really, when you think you have stories, a lot of times you just have events, and you have to something happened, and then you have to build the story around that because not everything that happens in your life has a beginning, middle, and end. Or, sure. And sometimes it's just a piece of a larger story, and sometimes you have to expound on it or, or heighten it or fictionalize parts of it. Uh, most of the episodes are taken from events in my life and then built upon. A couple of them are completely fictional, but the troll episode is was definitely real. I uh, some guy was uh, you know leaving posts on uh, on someone's blog that I knew. Uh, it was a pretty big blog, uh, you know, just basically campaigning against me, just like I'm an asshole, I'm a racist, I'm a sexist, I'm a, you know, and then you know misquoting my jokes and. And I tracked the guy down. I, you know, I figured I had to do detective work. Oh, look at like this! Like I said, you know, nice. I saw his name, and then I saw his avatar on the blog, you know, which was uh, from a movie. And then I went to Facebook. I looked up the name, and I looked at the three <laughs> guys that had the name. And then I found one of the guys that had a favorite movie that matched the avatar. And I'm like, that's my guy. <laughs> and then I start messaging him. I'm like, sort of like, you know, if you're gonna shit on me, you know, at least you know, put the whole joke in. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, you're having a problem with the, you know, it, you think that's going to save you? And, and I went back and forth with this guy for on and off for a year or so. Really? Yeah, I, I guess I just needed him to like me or something. Yeah. And eventually, you know, it arced out. You know, he, he was like, oh, I went through a bad time in my life and, you know, I, we're okay and whatever. He, I don't think he likes me, but but we, we rode this thing all the way through. But it, it didn't really leave the computer that much. Mm. 
So when I talked about that event as a possible storyline, then we're like, well, we got to get me out, get out in the world and track this guy down. Is everyone's information in between Twitter or Facebook or, or, or personal blogs. I right. mean, you know where people are going. I oh, mean, yeah. most people are like, you know, I'm going, I'm going to be at the thing. And I'm like, all right, well, now I know where you are. I guess I'll be at that thing, too. So <laughs> that, that's sort of how that happened. So yeah. they, we built that story out in that yeah. way. So after you murdered him, yeah. well, how did that, was that a, was a big fallout after the, the you know? Well, well, you know, it's interesting when you kill a troll, you know, it's like when, if a tree falls in the forest. <laughs> yeah. and but no, I, I didn't murder him, but it does have a good, uh, you know, it, it is sort of a humbling yeah. uh, end to that story on, on the show. Yeah, I yeah. feel like, you know, vampires feed off blood and trolls feed <laughs> off reactions. Sure. Right. It's yeah. The same yeah. sort of thing, man. Sure. That's all they want. Yeah. Ah, we've we've had our fair share. You know, you bring up Twitter, and that that seems like this huge tug of war because all of social media is this great place to try out new jokes. I follow a lot of comedians on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and it, it just seems like. You know, people will react the way they want to react. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fairly anti-joke on Twitter. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll do whatever I do. I, I just like impulsive things, no matter what. You know, I, yeah, I, I try not to get too hung up on crafting things. Occasionally, I will. I've been a little slack lately because I've been busy. But you know, I'll just, I'll just go on and on. There was a period on Twitter early on when I got on there where I would do complete stories. Mm -hmm. Like I'd be in a hotel room and just be bored, and I just start. <laughs> tweeting these events that weren't really happening <laughs> and you know some people dug them but other people are like dude you're blowing up my feed yeah. it's like well how important is your f <laughs> that's true <laughs> right? right then unfollow me idiot I, like that's the thing that people are like you suck i'm like yeah unfollow me yeah, yeah. restructure your priorities right. yeah just like you know i don't care if you leave yeah you know but that's not what it's not what it's about when i've gone back and forth and like, well i'm just trying to get you to and i'm like whatever you know what just forget about it and i'm you know blocking became fun i actually prefer <laughs> anecdotal comedy like that on twitter because when everyone's getting so topical like for example like a new pope when that when that story came out it just seemed like my entire feed was clogged with joke after joke yeah, and a lot it. of them were funny but after you read the 50th you one you get sick of it yeah you get sick of it so. i'll do one you know usually with topical yeah. I'll, I'll try to do one Mm -hmm. One thing that 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 just covers it for me. Okay, right? and, and then, then you're done. Move on. Then I move on and to you like, wipe you know, your hands, my shoes, right. or you know what's going on in my brain, right. what I'm eating, <laughs> how I feel about what I'm eating. Well, also you don't get a lot of the delivery that makes the jokes. Uh, Sometimes you know, part not, of the comedian. not unless they're 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 like you know classic right. you know, one two three jokes. But uh, yeah, I'll take pictures of records. <laughs> I'm listening to this now. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the equivalent. Of, it's not as bad as you know. Uh, this is what I'm eating. Uh, sometimes food. I don't do that too often yeah. unless it's pretty spectacular. Got to be careful with that. Mm. The people, for, that's like one thing. I feel like it's the big faux pas on Twitter. What? People who overshare like that with the food depends who they are and what yeah. they and what the angle is. You know, sometimes you got to take a picture of that sandwich. Sometimes it's like, <laughs> yeah. man, this was cooked just right. This Look is at this. why I'm hating me. <laughs> <laughs> this is going into it now. <laughs> going no. into my face. Um, I want to talk about Reddit real quick. Yeah. You, uh, you big, were you familiar with it before Not at you all. did the uh, AMA? No, I just did it yesterday. Yeah. Never done, man, never been there. Never so, been to that neighborhood. So what do you think of that? Because Reddit is basically the, I don't know, how would you describe it? It's like the underbelly, it's the gulch. Yeah, it's like a collective subconscious of the internet. Yeah. But in a more filtered way than it is on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. the uh, the the teeming, uh, the, the slightly filtered id. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. I don't know, it seemed okay. I You know, I've not engaged with it. I don't uh, have a lot of time to do shit. You know, right. I'll spend time on Twitter. You know, like Facebook became boring and too complicated for me uh and uh you know the reddit thing was fine i you know just answered people's questions i just kept scrolling down and answering i'm sure there's other things on there yeah that there's a reason why it looked like it could be a pretty uh pretty deep rabbit hole oh yeah but i have not engaged with it I'm, I'm i'm sort of out of the loop because i've been you know busy you know when you get busy and you know i'm producing two podcasts a week and now with everything else going on your life becomes a little smaller right than you would and i'm not sure that if you're on reddit necessarily implies that you're living a large life <laughs> But you certainly have access to a a lot of other people's uh, ramblings. Yeah, it's a scary, slippery slope. It's uh, it's a rabbit hole, and you don't want to you don't really want to go down there. Especially, it just yeah. kills productivity. Yeah, the thing about Reddit is that I read it almost every single day, but I can't tell you about anything that no. I've read on it, even In one from yesterday. Oh yeah, that's how that's how it's all like drugs. You're just doing <laughs> it to engage and get exactly. out of yourself, and you know, get some juice. Like, oh, that pissed me off. Hey, that hurts. Hey, look at him smiling. Uh -huh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that sort of thing. Um, I want to talk about you know tech in general with you because mm -hmm. on your show I kind of get the the vibe that you're this sort of luddite you know you sort of are you know not necessarily anti tech yeah but uh, you know you've embraced the podcast thing and it's definitely led to a lot of awesome stuff mm -hmm. how, how do you deal with that 
Well, I mean, I you know, I adapt to things. I, it's 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 not so much I'm a luddite. It's just I really need to be walked through things, and and I generally only use tech that. You know, the only way I know how to use tech is if I need to use it for something. Mm-hmm. So, and I guess that's how a lot of people are. It's like, well, teach me what I, I, I got to do to know how to do what I need to do. Right. Uh, so I'm not essentially a Luddite, but I'm not I'm not that great with a lot of things. I mean, I've got a, a new Mac and it's a great computer and I'm sure I don't use it for anything. Yeah. It's just, you just have to accept that. There, you know, when you, you, it's not even an age thing. I'm just not a big homework guy and I'm not going to sit down and, and problem solve that much. Yeah. I, I got, I got, the, I don't have the patience for it, but I usually have people around that can do that for me and then once they solve the problem they go oh it's just this button and i'm like, you know it's fine sweet you know i don't panic as much as i used to but i generally just need to know how to do what i need to do right like you know the the the, the things that i need you know i've got a zoom h4n that i take on the road and i you know i know how to set that up so i can record my podcast and you know in the garage i've got a little analog mixer that i run into uh to garage band so i need to know how to do that i need to know how to send files i need to, you know you get by yeah, yeah, I get by. I, you know, I'm not against anything. Certainly, I, you know, social networking. Once I figure that out, I'm all over that yeah. shit, and you know, it eats my life up. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not a gadget guy, yeah. really. I, I don't. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty earthy when it comes right down to it. You know, okay. I'm, I'm listening to vinyl again, and I'm trying. I'm moving backwards, and I, and and I don't like. Uh, I don't do video games. Never been a gamer. Never done any of that shit. So it's not. It's not really uh, part of my life. Vinyl's a big deal now. Yeah. It's become this sort of. Uh, yeah, I thought I was cult. the only guy. No, no, no. no, no. I know, I know. It's. A, I mean, you know, we have a guy on who swears by it. Obviously, I grew up. My parents playing records and stuff like that. Uh, you, you can't explain that to a, to a younger generation. They don't appreciate things like that. Not all of them. I don't want to make a blanket statement, but there's. Mm-hmm. It, it's tough for them to to understand. Like sound quality is a big deal. Okay, you're playing yeah. music out of your iPhone speaker. That, I, there's know, a problem. I think there's been research about you know the real difference between you know digital and vinyl, but I do think there's a there's a depth there and there's a warmth there, and there's also the act of playing a record mm-hmm. and the act of sitting with a record. And you know if you if you spend a little bread on a, you know I I've got the low the low end of the high end. You mm-hmm. know I put some money into it. I got a tube amp, and it's you know it's very. Oh, I know. Uh, it goes right, you know. There's only a volume and a balance knob on it, and the, it. the turntable goes right into it. So, yeah, I'm I'm hearing music that I listened to on records when I was a kid, but I never I never really heard it in, right. in that way. Yeah. So, there's something to be said about that. I, I think that you know, digital recording is what it is, and it's all very amped up and it's cracked out in a way, and you can hear a lot of stuff, but you don't really hear the mix that was laid down initially, right. and and a lot of stuff that was recorded on analog and specifically meant for record. Mm-hmm. It reads a different way. Yeah. And, but there are records that I listened to when I was a kid, you know, and I never had a very good sound system, but, it, but I, I've never heard them like this. So, so you're really coming to it and you're like, I never noticed that sure. before. Yeah. There's a, there's a range to it. That's very different. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny. I like, I like listening to people talk about listening to music because when you talk about records, you always say you'd listen to a record. Whereas with an MP3, you play an MP3 because yeah. it's a more passive experience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you listen to a yeah. record, you sit down and you, you pay attention. There's an more, aesthetic there. And that's when you get the nuances of the music. Yeah. And you know, the, it has to do with the room you're in and there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, and, and things, you know, I finally got the system. So it's, it's sort of, it sounds a way that I want. And right. I like it, but uh, you know, it's it's you, you spend money on this shit, and you, oh, yeah. you got to get. If you find yourself an honest, high end audio guy, mm-hmm. you know, you're like, all right, I, I just spent you know five grand on this stuff. How, how's it compared to, to spending ninety grand? Right. Like, what's right. the difference? He's like, yeah, it's about four <laughs> percent. <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, well, yeah, I'm glad I didn't spend ninety grand though, yeah, because I'd <laughs> never be able to enjoy any of it. We're almost out of time. I want to talk real quick about uh, Howard Stern. You were on his show mm-hmm. this yeah. week. What was that like? I listened to your show all the time. You said you were nervous. How well, did it come yeah, out? Well, the thing is, like, you, you know, as a comic and, and as somebody, you know, who's known of him, you know, my whole life, you, know, you, you kind of want to, like, I never did that. You know, and I, you want to meet these guys. Uh, you you want to, you know, the, it, it's, it's a grail in a way. You know, it's like Absolutely. one of those things you work for. And I was never a big Howard Stern listener. So I, I'm not, I don't have a relationship with him. You know, I've, I've listened to him a few times mm-hmm. and, and I get what he does, but I didn't grow up listening to him. And I don't, you know, I don't listen to much talk radio in general. I, other than, I listen to NPR or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, he's an impressive guy and, you know, and he's, he's, the, you know, he's the best at what he does you know, in, 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 in the way that he invented something. Mm-hmm. You know, he's an original. Yeah. He set a standard. But I just, uh, I didn't know what he was going to come at me with. Right. And, and for some reason, I always assume that there, that people are going to sandbag me with with some, you know, with some weird thing that I, you know, I got to answer to. But the truth of the matter was that, 
you know, he didn't wear, he didn't have his sunglasses on, you know, it was all, you know, and I get what he does, you know, you, when you walk in, he's already talking to you, mm. and then the guy, the producer, Gary, he puts the earphones on you with the mic attached, so you're already, so you know, you're, you're in. Right. And I, and I get that, that, uh, that device, you know, you have, you don't have time to sort of group, regroup, or, or, or get settled. It's like a psychological thing, for sure. Sure, right? but yeah. it's, it's, it's fine with me. I mean, I, I just didn't know what he was going to come at me with, and, and, you know, I'm pretty candid. I wasn't that worried about, you know, me, you know, choking or, or, or you know, getting, you know, uh, not wanting to talk about something. Right. But I didn't know what element he was going to hit on, and he chose jealousy and anger. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I? yeah <laughs> we can do that, and he's like that, too. Yeah. So we, I think we connected, and he was very present and gracious, and you know, it was a it was a great experience. It was really, it's it's rare that you meet people that you respect, mm-hmm. uh, and they they actually exceed your expectations. Right on. Like you know, a lot of times you meet people that you respect, and you're like, that guy was an f- idiot. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was that didn't go well at all. Uh, but I just approach people as people now, and you you know, I try to 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 just uh, you know be humble and, and 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 you know have the experience and it was a good one so it it, it was very uh, we I was in there for an hour and uh, I didn't get into too much trouble. I can agree. That's all you can ask for, man. You know, he's the kind of guy that'll be like, so you're an asshole. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I am. Is that I the road we're going down? Yeah, right, right. I am an asshole. You're right. And they'll say it again, no, but you're a complete dick. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah I am. Yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah. You want me to be a dick? I can be a dick. But I am. You know, I mean, that's a, that, that's his style. Yeah. You know, it's not an attack. Right. You know, it's it's a fact, right? And he did some pretty good amateur psychoanalyzing of my uh, my dynamic with my father and why I'm angry. And you know, he did he did his homework, and it was uh, it was flattering, and it was a good experience. Right on. Um, this has been great, man. Yep. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, sure. fellas. Guys, this, every- this kid talks too much. Yeah, <laughs> I know. He's got, I know. He's, his fingers are busy with the cameras and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, a big sure. deal. <laughs> Everyone, go buy the book, Mark Marin, uh, Tempting Normal. It's out now, and then Friday. Go watch uh, IFC's Marin premiering at 10 p.m. Thanks, man. Pretty cranked up about that, yeah. And listen to the podcast. Absolutely. Got, uh, t- uh, tomorrow I got Huey Lewis on. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, nice. I got an opportunity to interview Huey Lewis. I'm like, yeah, I'll talk to that guy. I'm kidding. Yeah, he's a big guy. Did you bring up, like, Back to the Future stuff? Yeah, a little. He doesn't like talk about that, you know, because uh, what the you mean the song or well, the just like you know he's a big sort of party. He's like oh a... no, no, we, there was a there was something he didn't want to talk about, some legal thing about oh, okay. uh, of the uh, I, I I, the Ghostbusters. Mate, the, is that his song? Did, 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 did someone rip off it? I don't. Oh, I don't know. Well, yeah, I didn't talk about Back to the Future too much, but I talked a lot about like a lot of these guys that you know you just take for granted, or you think you know what has he been up to, or sure. he was just that guy that did that thing. He was you know he started when he was real young as a harmonica player in a Bay Area. A, you know, kind of roots rock band, right? And ended up in England. You know, he had a life. You know, so we got a lot into that. Talked to him a, a little bit about Robert Altman because he was in Shortcuts. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, he had a part in that. He's one of those guys that found the body. You know, with uh, with what's his name, Fred Ward and Buck Henry and him. Huh. One of those guys who've that's a great movie. And you know, we talked about uh, you know about music and about the Bay Area and about growing up in the Bay Area during the '60s and how he and his friends didn't like hippies, so they go to Oakland and listen to RB music. It was good. It was good. All right, well, listen to that. That's on Friday, right? Tomorrow, yeah. Make sure you listen to that. That's WTFPod.com. And uh, again, follow Mark on Twitter. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna do that to you. Okay. At is. Mark Marin. That's a, a Mark with a C. That's a, right there at the top of my page. There's a troll guy that's apologizing. I think. There it is. <laughs> yeah. You feed off that. You love it. Well, he's like, you know, yeah, you do, you do, you turn your back on O and A, and you do Howard. I'm like, I was just on O and A, asshole. So like when I must have missed it. Yeah, you did. He's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> <laughs> LOL does not make it okay. Just because you happen to think it's fat does not make it okay. <laughs> we need to get that out there. Again, next time you're in New York, man, we'd love to have you back. This yes. has been great. Definitely. Sure, anytime. Really Thanks, appreciate fellas. it. Thanks appreciate for doing it. it. You bet. Uh, and, uh, you know, everything with the podcast. It's, uh, it's, it definitely means a lot to know that people are now, because of shows like yours, taking it forward. Yeah. yeah. Making it relevant. Making it important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, thank you. All as right? long as the patent trolls don't shut us down, we'll be okay. <laughs> All, All right. Keep doing it. We will be here uh, tomorrow. Caroline McCarthy's on the program. The number is 866-404-CNET. You can email us, the 404 at cnet.com. That will do it for us today. Thank you again to the great Mark Marin. Woo. We're back here tomorrow. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. Ariel Nunez. This has been the 404 Show. Have a great Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow.